So I have a 2022 Toyota Camry. The wheels got stolen. All the wheels are donuts. So I'm upgrading my wheels, replacing them. I got these new Toyota rims here, uh, but they didn't come with any sensors in them. So I got to take these valve stems out and install some sensors. Toyota switched to a newer style sensor. It's these ones right here. Um, they're a little more of a pain to put in, but I'm going to show you how to install them and program them uh, with this little code right here, the little ID number on them. It's very important, so we should write that down. On Every sensor has their own unique code. Let's write it down. Here's the part number. I'll link some parts and tools below. Uh, I'm going to be using the Launch X431 scanner for this. This scanner is available on Amazon. It's around like four or five hundred bucks. I'm going to link it below. This thing is just on a side note, a super good scanner. You could do all kinds of crazy stuff with this, not just, um, you know, tire pressure sensors, but all kinds of ECU coding by bi bi-directional control. Anyways, so let's go ahead and uh, get my wheel ready to put in the sensor and then I'll show you how to use my tool to I'm going to give you like a tutorial on how to program the sensors. So remove the valve stem if if you're uh you know if you have a sensor obviously we got to break down the tire a bit to get to the uh, mounting spot to mount the sensor in i remove my wheel right here so these new sensors you you need to um pull this little screw out and put the valve stem in first it's a little torx i believe it's like a t10 i'll verify that in the description below but um we're going to go ahead and just unscrew this little bolt, this little Torx bolt. Once you unscrew that, the sensor will remove from the valve stem itself. And basically how Toyota wants it done is they want the valve stem put in first, and then you reconnect the sensor with the bolt. And I suggest doing that too because these things are, um, like I said, they're not like the old style like, that you just kind of have a nut and you just screw it in. These are a little different. So I'm going to go ahead and get this bolt out. Um, it's kind of a tiny little a hole for the Torx bit and then once I get the sensor away from the valve stem I'm gonna put the valve stem in carefully put I put a little lube on the bottom of it and then between using a valve stem tool and pushing with my thumb I got it in place like that that's what it's supposed to look like just don't be don't be too hard on these because if you pull too hard up it'll just rip the valve stem in half because they're di they're different from a regular valve stem because they have some kind of internal brass uh, structure in there. But once that's in, then we can come in here and put our sensor on like that. Push it all the way on. It should stay on by itself, but we still got to put the screw in. I just kind of hand tighten it and then I'll go with my ratchet and tighten it. Make sure it's good and snug. Okay, so that's on. And then, uh, of course, reinstall the wheel. I mean the tire my bad, uh, carefully so you don't break the sensor. Once that's set to the correct tire pressure, go ahead and put the wheel back on the vehicle. And um, when you fill the tire up with air, different literature will say that it turns the sensor on, but I recommend having um, that in. And then here's a um, wheel lock. I'm gonna link a wheel lock set below so your wheels don't get stolen like mine did. I'm putting a wheel lock on there. Okay, and that, I got all the wheels set up. Um, I, I know I showed one, but I got all of them set up. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my Launch X431 scanner. It's Bluetooth, so all I got to do is plug this guy in right here, and then I can communicate wirelessly, which is nice. We're going to turn the car on. Of course, the TPMS light will be on. It should, it should flash. This one's not flashing right now. That's okay. But um, it has no communication with any sensors. So... I'm going to jump to the screen on the scanner, and then I'm going to show you how to program the uh, sensors. So first go to Intelligent Diagnosis. It'll read the VIN, and then it'll confirm, like, hey, it's this car, right? And then all you do is you push yes. This is a Toyota, so I push Toyota. All right, now it brings up the car. I'm going to go to Diagnostics. And then basically through Diagnostics, we're going to go to the TPMS module. So I'm in North America, so I, I push this button. Okay, this, I don't think this has radar crew, so I, I pushed others. And also, on a side note, if you don't like the bright sc screen, you could invert the colors so you have like a black screen. Sometimes I get a headache staring at screens all day. So uh, just a little, little side tip, you can do that if you wanted to. All right, now I'm going to push OK. 
And basically it's going to scan the whole car and it's going to pull up every module it can find. Um, it takes a second, you know, obviously not too long, but um, we're going to let it find all the, um, the modules. Okay, so next time I'm going to go to system selection. I'm going to go to all systems. And I went to this just so you can see how many systems this actually pulls up. Um, as you can see, quite a lot. And once you go into these systems, you have bi-directional control functions. Um, you know, so I'm going to go to tire pressure monitor module. All right, click that. And then I'm going to go to special function. And we're going to go to ID registration and tire number registration. You could pick the other one, tire position right, but I'm just going to pick this one. Um, it really doesn't matter. I'm not messing with the tire numbers or the tire positions. I'm just putting sensors in. But that's just like a, it has you know two options for you. But, uh, you know, it says this is for sens uh, transmitter ID. That just means like installing, the, programming the sensors basically to the computer. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to go to four tires because this has four tires. OK. Four tires. And then I'm going to go to write, which basically means I'm going to type in sensor IDs and then send them to the computer so we can start looking for them. So here's the old IDs that were in my tires that got stolen. But once you hit right, it's going to pop up with this. It says, please input the new sensors. Now, those little uh, sensor numbers there's a sensor ID number written on every sensor. I wrote them all down, and uh, they're all different, and I typed them all in. There's four of them, and then I hit OK. ID registration is complete, and then it's going to take about five minutes. I'm going to hit back. I'm going to hit the little curved arrow button. It's going to take about five minutes for the uh, computer to see those sensors and then report accurately the um, pressures. So I'm going to go to read data stream, and then basically I'm just going to chill I'm going to grab the uh, tire inflation pressures on ID 1, 2, 3, and 4. And I'm just going to chill in the car and wait and make sure that it starts seeing all of them. So there's ID 1. Scroll down here. There's ID 2. And as you can see, there's like a ton of uh, live data you could look at. But um, basically, if it sees the um, the tire pressure then it's seeing everything else. So that's all I really care about. I want, to, I want the uh, sensors to report the tire pressure. And then you could rest assured that if, if it has the pressure coming in, then those other functions are working properly too. And then I'm going to grab the ID codes just in case there's one that's not working. I could double check to make sure I wrote the right ID number down. So already two of the sensors are reporting pressure uh, in KPA. Uh, there's Here's the IDs I wrote down. So you could like double check your IDs, make sure you wrote them in right. Also, take a picture of the sensor too, so you you can have the ID. So there's no, um, you know, there's no doubt that you got the right number. And then ID four popped in right there. Okay, that's it. So now that we have tire pressures reporting and um, the IDs are correct, we're good. This car, the TPMS light, um, when you're doing this, it may stay on or flash for a bit, especially when you're in there riding. But uh, after a while, you'll just watch it, and it'll just stop flashing, and it'll go away. And that's it. That's how you do it, guys. So hopefully this video helped you out. All my sensors are reporting. Um, check out this scanner. Check out extra stuff in the description. This scanner is great. I highly recommend it. Uh, it's been nothing but impressive to me. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next video. All right, guys. That's all the information I got for you. The rest of the video is just some products and other stuff I got going on. Totally up to you if you want to stick around. I got a 15% off promo code for Oxido.com. They got a handful of products, but what they're mostly known for is their really good aftermarket LED headlights. They've been out a few years now, and at first the lights they had were 200% brighter than regular headlight bulbs. Now they've upgraded the tech this year, and now it's 600% brighter. So if you're in the boonies, the suburbs, the city, um, I highly recommend you upgrade your bulbs. Nothing wrong with having an old car, but you should get with the times and have bright headlights like everyone else. These bulbs are available on Amazon. However, if you go to the Oxido website, that's where I can give you a promo code for 15% off. All you got to do is go to the website, type in your year, make, and model. There's um, basically products for every car out there.
and uh, what kind of light you want. They have all kinds of different lights for interior, exterior, headlights. And then you just browse to what you need and you get it. And then at checkout, you're going to type in Guillermo Auto and then hit apply in the coupon code spot and it'll take 15% off.